Welcome everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And today I'm out on a nice quiet walk. Well, it's quiet when the cars don't go past me like that. Let's put it that way, right? And um, yeah, um, it is, as I speak, the 8th of October 2021. And today I wish to talk about um, an evergreen subject, but it's one of these kind of philosophical uh, staples of the culture war. Um, rather talk about this than talk about how shit the world is and um, what depressing news there is. So I'm just going to go to my notes and read this and you can tell me what you think. Anywheres versus somewheres, right? This is a subject a lot of people talk about and I thought I'd bring this up because I haven't really tackled this. So it says, anyway. Anywheres, about 20% of uh, the UK today, this is a very Britain-centric way of looking at the world, but I think this concept comes from Britain, so bear with me, right? Dominate British culture and society. They pass exams, do well at school, go on to residential university, work in a major city at some stage, marry late, and comprise almost all of the political, journalistic, corporate and artistic elites. They have identities which are portable and achieved and pride themselves on being tolerant, meritocratic, egalitarian, autonomous, open to change, internationalist and individualist. Ironically, they also almost all voted remain... Ugh to remain in the European Union, that is, of course. They're actually the ones who leave their place of origin and move somewhere else. Somewheres, about 50% of the UK today, are more rooted and usually have ascribed identities. Scottish farmer, working class Geordie, Cornish housewife, etc. Based on group belonging and particular places, 60% of people in Britain live within 20 miles of where they lived when they were 14. This, rather than educational class, is what joins them together. They earn, live, work and vote in widely differing ways, but are typically more local in outlook, communitarian, stable, patriotic, traditional, mindful of security and tied to specific places. Many, though by no means all, voted to leave the European Union. But by and large, uh, they are the ones who remain physically. They have larger families and give more to charity. So, yeah, this is the thing. I see kind of a lot of interesting stuff in there, and I also see a few contradictions and inconsistencies. Because although the anywheres, right, um, you know, the ones who voted to remain in the European Union, right, are supposed to be meritocratic and individualistic, I don't actually think that they are. I just don't. I think they're a bit more lefty, and the lefties have turned collectivist, and they seem to be more about, you know, rather than it being, um, you know, that thing's been a meritocracy. They want to. They want it to be that we should. Um, you know, what's it? They, they want to try to encourage us all to be more equal. Now, again, this is what I mean. How can you be egalitarian and create equality of outcome, but at the same time be individualistic and meritocratic? Doesn't make sense to me. None of that does me. And again, you know, they do seem to be the sort of people that we consider to be champagne socialists. Now, I don't fit into any of these groups because I just don't fit anywhere me you know I might as well have been born in space and traveling from planet to planet never settling anywhere really but I do kind of have a sense of rootedness on the inside even if I don't have much of a sense of rootedness on the outside you see yeah I, I um, grew up in England with Irish parents um, so as a result I kind of felt like I was on the receiving end of hostility um, I don't know that I would call it racist because, you know, I'm the same colour as them. At the same time, I also grew up, you know, in a place that was multi-ethnic. Council estates are multi-ethnic. You get some people that are like fascists, but then you get a lot of people who are not, you know, and that's the thing. Working class communities are very diverse in thought and opinion, in that sort of way. And so, as you can imagine, you know, when someone who was grew up in the Cotswolds who didn't know any black people until they moved to Islington, who studied critical race theory, comes up to someone like me to tell me that I'm racist because Robin D'Angelo said, right, that I am. Um, you can imagine just how, just how much contempt I have for them, you know? How bloody fucking dare they come up to me and be condescending and patronising like that. What the fuck do they know? You know, they didn't even experience any of this stuff themselves. I did, you know? And, um, you know, and then they'll tell me that I'm an inferior human being. Well, they won't tell me, but they will imply it in a very passive-aggressive way that, you know, they'll make me feel like um, that they are a higher authority than me in this kind of way or other. Now, these are the people that you normally associate as the, the anywheres. But 
I don't fit into either the somewhere or the anywhere bracket. This is one of the problems I got. I've got a mate of mine also who again doesn't fit into the somewhere versus anywhere thing. Now, he has a lot of the sort of anywhere traits about him is that he's probably a bit more kind of, you know, lefty metropolitan in his outlook. He's vegan, unlike me, and just normal vegetarian. He's probably uh, more pro the Labour Party movement than I am. He's probably um, definitely to the left of me economically even if much less to the left of me politically um but definitely um you know when it comes to stuff like this uh he's very much like what i would call an anywhere except where he lives he lives in the house he always lived in right um he he um, has um extended family around him in his town the town he lives in i lived there myself so yeah um he has a lot of the somewhere traits he's a physical somewhere but he's definitely more than anywhere on the inside Right? Where I, on the other hand, am a physical anywhere, but I've definitely got more of the somewhere stuff about me on the inside, I think, you know? I, I wish I wasn't as culturally uprooted and misplaced as I am, but I kind of identified with um, England and I realised why I, I felt it had to leave the European Union. I never felt that it, it worked. I never felt that Britain in the European Union, England in particular, should ever have been in the European Union. I also have a problem with centralisation, just purely because I have a problem with top-down authority of any kind whatsoever. Even if there's convenience, even if it means, you know, um, that the way it's harder to travel, there's not so much free travel anymore. But in a way, you know, all the places I wanted to go to were outside of, the, you know, I couldn't do that anyway. All the places I really want to go in the world are not in Europe. So they're all in... The rest of the world, Central and South America, Asia, Africa, right? Not Europe and not North America. Everywhere I want to go is far away from all of that. Because I kind of think of, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like how homogenous Europe feels now, especially in the aftermath of the European Union. I think a lot of its diversity has disappeared, except one country that I like in Europe, and that is Portugal, probably because of the climate and the lovely sort of red terracotta and white buildings that you see everywhere and the amazing Moorish architecture that you see there and those lovely sort of um, stonework that they have on the, on the ground. It's a really aesthetically pleasing place is Portugal and the 300 days of sunshine and the oranges you can pick off trees in the winter there, the olives and all that. It's a lovely place, it really is. But again, Portugal is one of these places that I don't think is typical of Europe, even though it's in the European Union. It's very different from everywhere else I've been in Europe. I like it for that reason, man. And, uh, of course, you know, you don't feel like you're um, surrounded by cultural chauvinists in Portugal, if you're British, because uh, we've, Britain and Portugal, have got the longest um, peace treaty of any two countries, dating what must date back to Queen Elizabeth I, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. So... Um, from, uh, you know, from my perspective, I look at this world and I think, well, I don't fit into the somewhere versus anywhere category. To me, it's like a false dichotomy, right? And the same thing when I look at the perspective of my mate who I think of as being um, the inverted version of that. He doesn't fit into that either. As I say, he's a physical somewhere, but very much a kind of a, an anywhere in mentality, much more than me. And I'm more kind of a physical anywhere, but with much more of a sort of mentality of a somewhere, right? If you were to go by this model, um, in the sense that I'm, you know, I might be more into more conservative media than he is these days, even though I've been more of a freak all my life, right? And been through all of the countercultures. Um, you know, there's that. But at the same time, I'm also thinking to myself, right, that. Um, yeah, I'm very much a kind of a standalone person. There ain't many standalone people. And a little while ago, well, actually, this was on Facebook. Uh, it was people have been spreading this thing on Facebook recently, and um, it's a picture of a daisy on its own. And um, basically, the message to say, you know, you're better off to stand alone. Don't be part of the crowd. You know, even if you're unpopular, even if no one likes you or whatever, you know, you're pretty much better off to stand alone. In this world right um, and of course um, Facebook does not want to be encouraging you to stand alone right <laughs> no you must um, you must follow the script you must do as the collectivists tell you you must do you must think the way they want you to think 
the idea of you standing alone and being autonomous and being completely you know outside of all of the influence is not taking sides oh no you can't do that now and um, you know I'm, I'm one of the most standalone people you'll find anywhere and um, you know that's the thing um, they consider us to be dangerous now because we go around telling you don't listen to anyone don't listen to either side and I've been like this about the vaccine pro or anti don't take pro or anti stances with it right I've been about the somewhere versus anywhere thing you know if people are too much to the right and too much to the left, you know, then just detach yourself, decouple yourself from it all, right? Um, it's okay if uh, people build low-resolution models to try to describe the difference between two different types of people. That's okay. As long as you realise that it's a low-resolution model and there is a level upon which you need a little bit more nuance. And if it turns out that you don't fit those models, right, then that's okay. Um, and being somewhat of an atypical person who does very much stand alone in this world it's getting noisy and getting closer to the main road but hey I don't mind because hey the trees are looking the trees are looking more exotic so that's all right isn't it? isn't it yeah yeah so anyway I think I've made my point excuse me I'm getting a bit distracted and stifled at this point but yes I think um, I've pretty much made my point here that um, the somewhere versus anywhere thing is something that I am interested in. But at the same time, I also feel I don't fit into it. I'm all up for people who are somewheres. You know, I'm all up for those people who I think, right, would, uh, you know, want to preserve and conserve their culture. Because why not? Do we really need a bunch of people coming along, homogenising the world, making everywhere brutalist, making everywhere so it looks the same as everywhere else, and all generic, and you can't tell where you are? Do we need that? I don't think we need that, man. For all the people who wish to keep their places where they live traditional and, um, you know, preserve what they have, this is one of the things I like about the world. This is one of the things I love about the world. As a travelling man, as someone who goes to all these different places and sees all these different things, it feels like it's something I can't have. It feels like uh, it's something I've been uprooted from all my life. And they might look at me and think that I'm some sort of, you know, like um, Phileas Fogg type or whatever as I travel. But then I'm looking at them thinking, they've got the one thing that I can't have, right? And I suppose that's the thing. I'd like to be a somewhere, but I know I can't be one. But I know that what these people do is they make every country and they make every part of the world Every different place that you can go to, excuse this fucking lorry, you get American trucks here, man. <laughs> right, so yeah. Um, yeah, they make these places different from every other place. They make every country you go to unique. And that's the thing. I don't want the whole world to end up looking like Croydon, right? <laughs> or Dubai. Or, uh, or some retail park or some corporate business park. I want everywhere in the world to look different and unique from everywhere else in the world. And it's the somewheres, not the anywheres, that do that for us. The anywheres, well, just, you know, they should just sort of like tread lightly. Don't interfere with the world. Let the world be what the world is, right? And that's kind of like what I feel I am. I'm an atypical anywhere with a lot of somewhere traits, but I don't want to change what I have. And I don't want to tell them that I know what's best for them, because I don't. And this is what I feel like when I'm out here in the world. I often say when I get out of England, you know, when I travel, I say I'm going to the world, right? Because when I'm in England, I don't feel like I'm in the world. I kind of feel like I'm at home, right? And when I'm out here, I think I'm in the world. That's kind of like what I would consider to be a somewhere trait, right? That's the thing. Sorry, I've just got to come down this bit because there's a few interesting trees I think you've got to see. I'm still buzzing out and spinning out on all the... The, these nice trees, I mean, look at the palm trees you've got growing alongside these, um, these buildings here and then just behind me there. Oh, this is lovely, man, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm still buzzing out on it. I think this is really nice. So, I'm going to um, knock it on the head now because I'm probably getting strange looks at from people. <laughs> I'm getting kind of used to this now. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, do your bit to help send big tech to the land of MySpace by having a look at the show notes below and checking out our alternative platforms.